Okay. So, uh, thank you for the time, Parinaldi. Hi, everyone. I'm Asif from Bandung Institute of Technology. In this session, I want to share the result of our research, which is vehicle speed estimation using YOLO, Kalman filter, and frame sampling. Okay, so here are the contents of today's presentation. We start with background. Okay, so they're talking about traffic law. Traffic law has macroscopic and microscopic characteristics. In the microscope, it can serve as feature in modeling transportation planning. And in the microscope, it can be used to enforce like speed limit. Because in the microscope, uh, it is being said by DPS that uh, many indicators such as traffic flow can assist as a feature in modeling. And then in the microscopic scope, uh, it is being said by the WHO in uh, 2008 that approximately 1.0, uh, 1.2 million people die every year due to overspeeding through reaction factors. Okay, so traditional methods uh, use inductive loop detector, which is automatic but intrusive. Or uh, the second one is speed gun, which is manual and can only detect uh, one vehicle at a time. Here we focus on using computer vision, which is automatic and non-intrusive. And so for the analysis, there are actually many researches conducted about this topic. Uh, so issues for these researches are either unknown object. Uh, so like, for example, if we use motion detection, it can detect other than cars, like it can detect people or maybe animals even that. And for another research that uses like computer vision, uh, I mean, machine learning for detection, uh, then it, it usually has compet computational complexity because um, basically uh, they are using like serial processes, like machine learning process, and then another one using another machine learning process. So in this research, we, we use the fourth one, the Kumar's proposed method as baseline, which is actually using uh, mass RCNN and CNN based tracking. And then we have some modifications. So the proposed architecture for our uh, system is that, uh, as you can see on the picture here, the proposed architecture is a modified version of Kumar's architecture. Here we use TensorRT optimization of YOLO. Then we change the uh, CNN based tracking to Kalman filter based tracking. And then one thing, uh, one important thing that we also employ is using frame sampling. Okay, so next we are going to the implementation section. Here is the environment for conducting the research. So first part of our architecture is the frame sampling. The idea is actually very simple. We use a counter for every frame. So first frame is uh, we have n as one for the first uh, first frame, and then two for the second frame, and then we skip frame if the module of the counter to a set variable n jump is not zero. So for example, if we have the variable n jump is five, then we only uh, we only use the the zero uh, frame and then the fifth frame and then the 10th frame and so on. So basically we skip like four frames. And then the second part is using yellow version four. We train using subset of Coco with multiple configurations as you can see on the slide, uh, which are the V4 or the default one, the V4 CSP, the V4X miss, the V4 tiny and V4 tiny 3L. So the Coco data set is originally has like uh, three about three, three thousand, uh, 300,000 images with more than 100 classes, but we filter it to only vehicles. So we only have like uh, 18,000 train images and 800 test images with four classes, which are bus, cars, uh, motorcycles, and, and trucks. Okay, so the next one, uh, next is optimization using TensorRT. So TensorRT is actually a framework from NVIDIA that can like convert any model that is defined using INNX format to a uh, like optimized model like so basically if you use like machine learning, uh, usual machine learning it's uh, it has the values of the weights or the value that is being passed as float floating points but if you use TensorRT you can change it into integer with like, eight bits so basically uh, in NVIDIA GPUs it's much much more faster if we use uh, like integer integer operation rather than floating point inter operations so basically uh, we will convert the YOLO version for weights and CFG, CFG after we train it. Other than YOLO layers, we will convert it to ONNX, ONNX uh, format. And then we convert it to TensorRT using the framework 
uh, from NVIDIA. And later, we add the YOLO layer using the YOLO plugin from Wang Xinyu. And then for the object tracker itself, we use common filter as the estimation model and Humerian algorithm with IOU cost function as the data association. So here is uh, one example of how it works. The red box is, is the detected, detected uh, result from YOLO to update common filter states, which are associated by, uh, which will be later associated by IOU. And then the blue box is the estimated result from each common filter state after red boxes have been associated to each state. So basically, uh, for the first frame, we, we have no common filter states. And then the second frame, we have one common filter state. And then we associate uh, this detection here uh, with the existing common filter state. And then for the, the next frames, the common filter state will uh, hopefully like detect the correct uh, boarding box for the car. So the next step is the word frame, plane rectification. So we basically uh, given length and width of a lot segment and for orthogonal lines on image. So we will do SVD. Uh, we, we do this using open, open CV to find the homography matrix H, which has the size of three, uh, three X3. And then the boarding box reference point selection. So basically for each boarding box, we actually uh, need to uh, like make one point, which will be the reference point of that boarding box or that car. To make uh, like to find the difference between frames, uh, the reference point between frames to find out uh, the distance of the car movement. So basically, oh, we we use a new strategy that that uses the uh, vanishing point as a new feature. So basically, we uh, draw a line from the vanishing point to the center point of the box, and then after it reaches the site, then we call that as our reference point selection. Oh, and in the baseline solution, uh, Kumar is actually only used the center, uh, the bottommost center of the boarding box. So we will use uh, both of that in our later experiment. And then the last is for the vehicle speed translation itself. Uh, we use the difference of end frame before current frame and divide the delta position of the reference uh, boarding box uh, as said in the last slide. And then we will divide it by the time difference between the frame. Yeah, so now for the experiment results. Uh, for object detection, as you can see, we found that uh, YOLO version 4 with TensorRT using default configurations yield the best results for vehicle detection. The baseline method, uh, which is mask RCNN, is found to have worse MAP for, with worse uh, FPS performance too. OK, so here's an example of the object detection models uh, for, for a picture. And then for the object tracker uh, experiment results, we also found that YOLO with Kalman has better MOTA and MOTP performance compared to the baseline method. Another thing to note, note is that uh, using deep short or CNN tracker, uh, best tracker, uh, which is shown here on the second, uh, on the yeah on the second and the um, and the first first uh, row actually. So if you use deep short as the tracker, which is the baseline method, we have less identity switches compared to the proposed common filter. So uh, using, the, using the proposed method, we have uh, better MOTA and MOTP, but we have uh, worse identity switches. We also compare the results of using different frame sampling parameters. So uh, because the video FPS is actually, uh, for the object tracker one, we use uh, video FPS of 25 FPS. So if we use NJAM S1, which means that we don't skip any frame, uh, we, we have uh, the, the best MOTA and MOTP. Uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, pretty self-explanatory, but if we use uh, more, more than one and jump, for example, like two, then we have less MOTA and MOTP, but uh, the, the difference between the MOTA and MOTP isn't actually that big. So actually we can employ this frame skipping to our speed estimation system. And then even if we use NJAM S5, which means that the video FPS is actually being don't sample to five FPS, we have the MOTI and MOTP still above the fifth, uh, 50 mark. So it's, it, it, might be, uh, it might be actually will uh, produce good results for the speed estimation, which will, be, uh, which will be seen later in the next experiments. So here are the samples of tracking using ferry and jumps. Uh, this is two, five, and 10. And as you can see, if you use 10, then the common filter actually couldn't like, associate 
the cars because it is being skipped so much uh, to, to 2.5 FPS. So now for the vehicle speed estimation itself, we found that the proposed system has better MAE, uh, mean average error, and FPS compared to the baseline. Uh, but using the baseline tracker, uh, which is deep sort with YOLO, uh, which is the proposed method uh, we are using, it, it yields the best MAE at 0 0.81 at uh, 49 FPS. Uh, but one thing to note is that the test video is using Brno Com Speed 1, uh, whereas the object tracker test video is using UAD track. So the UAD track one has uh, like made a lot of uh, a lot of vehicles, uh, whereas the Brno Com Speed one has uh, much, much less, less vehicles. So as you can see here, if you use deep sort with YOLO, we actually only uh, can yield like 15 FPS uh, for many vehicles, but for lesser uh, lesser number of vehicles, we, all, we can yield 49 FPS. Okay, so next we are going, uh, because uh, we, we assume that this one, the second one is not real time on like many, the condition of many, many vehicles on screen, then we will only, next letter, we will only uh, do the experiment using the third, uh, third combination. So next is the test using Ferret and before, which is the distance of frames we find with the delta position, <coughs> uh, we find the delta position width. So the best result is if we use two as the NB4 in video with 50 FPS, the Bruno Com Speed one, meaning only 40 millisecond difference in time. So it, it yields 0 0.91 MAE. Uh, whereas if you use only one frame difference, then it, it yields 1.17 MAE in kilometer per hour. OK, then we use varied frame skipping parameters also. We found that if we use n jump equals to 5, meaning we skip four frames, we still have good MAE of 1.01 .01 kilometer per hour and an acceptable error interval of, uh, of 81%. So it's actually still pretty good. So uh, basically meaning that even if you use the video FPS as 10, FP, uh, 10 FPS, then we have an implied FPS of the system as uh, 177, like 70% faster than the than if we don't use any and jumps, uh, it, it will still yield a pretty good result. And then for the boarding box reference point selection, uh, yeah, actually for this one, the baseline uh, produced the better result rather than the proposed one. So, uh, or rather I should say that it's not, uh, it's not very uh, much indifference. So basically if you, if you use the bottom center of the B box, then we, it has 0 0.98 MAE. And then if you use the proposed one, it has one. So only little difference. So we, uh, but almost every 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 uh, every row here, you can see uh, it makes the MA worse. So we will skip this one. Uh, we will uh, make this proposed one. Uh, we will dump the proposed one. Okay. So further addition, uh, if we use YOLO without tensor RT and only CPU computation, uh, this is uh, the uh, where it makes it uh, where using frame skipping makes it better. So as you can see, if we, all, we don't employ any frame skipping techniques here, meaning that NJAM is one, we only have FPS of 1.6 FPS using the full YOLO version 4. Uh, and even if you use the YOLO version 4 tiny, we, we have only 8.4 FPS. But if we employ uh, eight as the, uh, as the frame skips, meaning we only have a, uh, 50 divided by 8 FPS of video, we, have, we can have an implied FPS of 62, where the MAE is still actually still kind of the same, or even actually it's better than if we use NJAM S1, uh, which is at 2.37 uh, kilometer per hour with an acceptable error of 70.1%. Okay, your time. So for the, yes. For the conclusion. Uh, as you can see on here, and then the future improvements here. Yeah, okay. So because the time is up, I think I will return the time and venue to Parinal. Okay. okay, thank you, Asif Human Rais. Okay, uh, we enter the ask and question answer, ask and answer question, yeah, session.
please, uh, if you want to ask the presenter, uh, you can ask that, that directly, yeah, or you can write your question here. Any question for presenter? Parila, <laughs> you want to you want to ask the presenter? Okay. Thank you, Pak Rinaldi. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thank you very much, yeah, Asif, yeah, for your nice presentation, yeah. Mm. I think your application is very useful, yeah, especially in for police department, yeah, to control the traffic of your uh, the traffic of the uh, cars, yeah, especially in uh, toll road, yeah, in the toll road, yeah. Okay, my question is that, what is the effect of the light, for example, yeah, the light, yeah, uh, what will be the accuracy of your uh, speed measurements yeah if run out of the light yeah like that so did you do experiment for example if yeah, the uh, you apply your applications yeah in in the evening for example in the evening yeah or in the afternoon yeah or in the morning yeah yeah is there any di uh, di uh, is there any difference the result yeah like that. okay so the effect of the light yeah and then uh, my second question is that uh, you know that police departments yeah already applying yeah this kind of the application yeah uh, did you know yeah what methods that the the application uh, applied in the police departments use yeah and uh, have you compared with the accuracy of the application that already uh, applied by the police department? Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Parila, for the question. Yeah. So for the first one is about light. So basically, as you can see on the architecture here, uh, it is uh, like very, very dependent on the object detector one. So basically, if you want to make it like uh, perform perform pretty good, uh, even at a uh, worse light conditions, you can like maybe put more uh, more uh, training data with light uh, with night night condition. So for example, even as you can see here in the sample object detector one, you can see that uh, even at this light condition, it can still detect uh, cars. And then for the latter part, like the tracking one and then the speed detection one, uh, speed, speed estimation one, it has nothing to do with the detection part. So, I mean, like the, the, light, the light problem only, only have, uh, only will only alter about uh, this object detector part, not, not the next part, but, in this uh, in this project, I actually uh, used Coco dataset, which actually has um, cars in night condition. So I think uh, even though like in the sam sample data data set, uh, the video data set, there there is no such thing like uh, in night in night condition. But if as you can see here in the sample of the object detection one, you can see that it can also detect in low light condition. So that's for my part of the first one. And for the second one, uh, I'm not really sure about uh, the how the police use one in Indonesia, but I I actually know that uh, some part of the road actually use like a physical like uh, loop in the inductive detector. And then for the camera one, it only it only detects like, uh, like for car counting, like maybe in some specific area, there are how many cars, uh, which is actually only object detection one rather than um, speed estimation one. Yeah, so that's as far as I know about the police part. Okay, uh, the time is up. Uh, thank you uh, for ASI 